This is a video segment that goes together with combining decoder design and neural adaptation in brain machine interfaces. I'm Krishna Shinoy from Stanford. And I'm Jose Carmena from UC Berkeley. So, brain machine interfaces, or BMIs, are an emerging class of medical system that aims to help people with neurological injury and disease, such as amyotropic lateral sclerosis or upper spinal cord injury. And these systems work by recording electrical neural activity from various parts of the brain, for example, the motor cortices, translating these neural signals into control signals by virtue of a mathematical decoding algorithm, which we refer to here as the initial decoder. These control signals can then be used to drive a prosthetic actuator, for example, a robotic prosthetic arm, or stimulating the paralyzed musculature to move the natural arm or a computer cursor on a screen. And because you can see how that prosthetic actuator moves, it completes the so-called control feedback loop, or a closed loop. These systems have been shown in laboratory experiments over the past 10 to 15 years to work fairly well, and uh, greater improvements are most certainly needed. And over the past five to eight years, these systems have even made their way into initial FDA pilot studies. So now let's take a little bit of closer look as to how we can design this initial decoder. So what we can start with is an animal, in this case a rhesus monkey, making actual arm movements, which we then render on a screen as a computer cursor moving. Or we can just ask the monkey to sit passively while observing a cursor being moved uh, by the computer itself. This allows us to record neural activity from the brain, Y of T, while recording the movement of the uh, hand or the computer cursor. We can then relate these so-called kinematics or movements to the neural activity so as to arrive at the initial decoding algorithm as shown here. Now, because this is the first time that his neural activity, Y of T, is directly controlling the cursor via that control feedback loop, that closed loop, we might want to make further adjustments. For example, maybe he always wishes to move his cursor directly towards the target, as shown in panel four here. If he wishes to always move towards the target, but the initial algorithm actually takes you slightly off track, we can just make the assumption that he always wants to move towards the target and retrain the algorithm so as to arrive at the final refit Kalman filter control algorithm. And this is what will be referred to by Jose as the initial decoding algorithm or decoder adaptation. So another way of doing BMI is by getting the brain to learn the specifics of the decoder or transform algorithm that is being used to generate or to, to translate neural activity into motor commands. And it has been shown that if we keep the same neural recordings throughout the length of the experiment and we pair those with the same decoder, uh, the, in this case, the primate brain is able to learn a inverse model of these decoders. In other words, it learns something about these parameters. And this is shown in, um, in what we refer to as a cortical map for neuroprosthetic function, which is what you see here in late learning compared to early learning. And what you can see is that early versus late shows that the, the maps are very different, but they're very similar thereafter. And it's this similarity of the, of the maps that we refer to as a prosthetic motor memory, that here in the next figure, you can see as a function of time how the similarity of the decoders covaries with the actual learning, which is the black curve, of the, of the animal. So as the animal gets better, this motor memory becomes more stable. Having studied separately decoder adaptation and neural adaptation, the question now is how to combine them. So one way in which we envision doing this is in two different scenarios. One is in early learning, which the decoder will be uh, adapted in closed loop to a certain level of performance, after which it will be fixed to facilitate this cortical plasticity. In other words, getting the brain to learn something specific about that decoder. And after that point, we'll just adapt when needed. For example, if there is noise in the system, or which will, might make in a given day performance to go lower, uh, we will adapt to bring it up where it was. Or if there is a loss of cells in the population, like here, for example, uh, we will just add new cells if we have them, or readapt the decoder with whatever cells we have left. 
and, and so on. So the idea being that we will keep that cortical map through time and we'll be do, be just be doing small touch-ups or closed-loop refits as needed. Our hope in writing this perspective piece is to encourage the field to systematically explore combining decoder and neural adaptation as this may well increase performance, robustness, and generalization. Thank you. We hope you enjoy the paper.